Hi, it's Bruce again, and welcome to my Rocky Mountain lab. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start today uh, producing a number of little videos uh, for various projects that I've done the last couple of years here that I think maybe other people would like to, uh, to do themselves. These projects are relatively easy. Um, and they perform quite well, and uh, and they weren't too expensive. So, some of the some of the functions are uh, are uh, technical and uh, and sort of difficult to just find. Uh, but this was a, a fantastic way to uh, to experience a construction project and come up with something that was quite usable. I think I'll start today uh, with this. 500 megahertz bandwidth power meter. Um, it'll measure from a positive 10 dB down to a minus 80 dB. So, according to that, you got a 90 dB span. Now, I'll tell you, uh, after t building and testing this, I found it to be more like a 70 dB span, but still quite usable. Um, I don't know why the reduction, but uh, but I wouldn't let that sway anybody. The, uh, and let me go ahead and give you an example right now, if we can see this. might be easier if I dim the overhead lights. We'll take care of that. There we go. Got a minus 10 dBm right now showing up on the uh, upper right corner. And that's coming from this... Uh, HP generator that's generating 100 megahertz and right now I'm setting at um, a minus 10 dBm on the output and uh, happens to be what I'm reading and I've got uh, another attenuator put in series with it which right now I'm set at zero so I'm not attenuating at all and what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this dial from a minus 10 to a minus 20 dB and we see we get minus 20, in this case, 0.7. Let's go to a minus 30. And we have minus 30.8. Minus 40. Minus 40.9. So as you can see, we're tracking very, very well within a dB, and that's over um, that's over a 30 dB span right now. And if I go back to the minus 10, which I wanted to do, and I'll go ahead then and uh, and I'm going to dial in um, this attenuator. I'm going to go to uh, Add an extra dB, and we went from 10 to 11. If I do it again, 12, 13. So as you can see, I've got a very nice way of actually uh, verifying the attenuators that I'm working with and looking at the... Uh, attenuated output of my receiver and knowing that I'm calibrated. Here I'm, uh, I just dialed up uh, the 0.1 dB attenuator and we see that we went up 0.1. If I go 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So we're getting uh, resolution down to the 0 0.0 dBm. Relatively exciting. Now it says RF power, it gives the dBm value and the down below it says 55.09 millivol millivolts uh, 62.5 milliwatt microwatts microwatts um, and it calculates that as a minus 12 dBm now if we go back to zero here okay we've got a minus 10 dBm we see 99.67 microwatts um, 70.4 millivolts and a minus 10 dBm. And what I can do is I can uh, I can preset a um, 
uh, either I can add some additional dBs or I can subtract some dBs to preset a dBm amount on the meter face. You do that between the um, uh, the function, the uh, module, and the selection switches. And um, the big thing here was actually just installing the meter, wiring it up, providing power. Um, uh, I replaced the uh, the little tactile push button switches with um, uh, some momentary action switches on the front panel here. Uh, but that's all I did. Everything else is uh, was on the board. Cost me, um, I believe I paid about $38 at the time. This was in 2016. It's still available, and I think the price has gone down to about $29 for the, uh, for the module now. In fact, they had uh, uh, one with an even greater range. Supposedly goes to 10, uh, 10 gigahertz um, for just about the same money, so... You might want to check into that too. Um, then price of the case, which I bought 14 cases at a real low price some years ago, and I've been utilizing these, which is why they all are are very similar here. They're handy size and they uh, and they work quite well. Then the other thing, I provided power. I used a little wall wart, and I just wired it in directly, and uh, and the wall wart right now is. Is plugged in over here into the power so you can see it. Uh, in this case it was a... Um, oh. So when the uh, faceplate was machined and uh, uh, I was ready to do something with the labeling, uh, then I was faced with what, what I was going to do here. And what I used, uh, I'll give you a look at it, I was at Walmart and I bought this Dymo label. The Dymo Letra, Letra Tag, L-E-T-R-A Tag. And uh, what it lets me do is I can, I can choose to use either white-backed plastic or I can use clear transparent plastic tapes, which drop, these cartridges just drop down on the inside there. Right now I've got white plastic inside of it. And you can... Uh, Punch in what you want as far as labeling. You have a choice of some formatting. You've got size you can change. and and um, Like right now I've got extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And there are other formatting uh, differences. Borders. Style. Let's say style. We've got bold. Normal, vertical, shadow effect, outline, italic. So anyway, you got the idea. And with that, I was able to uh, to manufacture these little clear labels that uh, did a decent job of, of labeling the front panel. Now, if I was to cover the whole thing with, uh, with a sheet of clear vinyl, uh, which you can get for your printer, for instance, um, it would... Uh, it would tend to hide the fact that these are uh, decals and it would uh, provide a pr protective finish over the whole thing. Something I, I might look into doing. Quite a satisfactory project. Now I've run a series of tests on this to see how linear it was and I find myself with all my devices and uh, you know the possible uh, effects of each one and every connection that you make and everything there's some deterioration but uh, I find myself to be around three percent uh, in value uh, to what's expected which is I think quite good um, and as we saw as I changed the dial it was it was tracking it very well so there you go uh, we'll take you we'll give you a look at the inside in a moment Okay, so I've opened up the unit and, uh, and exposed the interior for you. Again, you can see the front here. So basically, uh, most everything that was needed was supplied by the, uh, by the module itself here. This all came together. I needed to be able to fasten the module to a faceplate. Provided a power switch, which I had to 
wire from the uh, power terminal here to the power switch and then from it to the uh, positive side of the uh, of the wall wart and then um, the input terminal uh, I happen to get a uh, what they call a bulkhead uh, uh, 50 ohm uh, uh, connector it's a BNC connector and that would be the uh, the female which then wired into the input here you can see the little green terminal block so that was relatively easy and then uh, the hardest part was probably uh, uh, replacing the tactile switches with uh, momentary contact switches here I've got three of them and uh, and as you can see, what I did was I soldered on uh, the pads on each side of the switches down there, provide a wire to come up to the uh, to the switch itself. Now, when I uh, when I mach machine the uh, faceplate, I started by uh, making a, uh, a computer uh, faceplate representation uh, of the unit. What I did is I I took the box the uh, the faceplate itself from the box and I put it on a scanner and I scanned it and that gave me a scan of the faceplate which gave me the dimensions and everything and I was able to to trace around that photo with a tra uh, of the faceplate and, uh, and then I uh, worked with that tracing and I decided how I wanted to cut my uh, uh, my slot for the meter how I was going to fasten it I needed to drill four holes in the corner uh, for the slot, I uh, I drilled a hole in a, in one of the corners, and I used a I used a jigsaw, and I jigsawed the uh, rectangle out, and then I drew a a place for each of the switches to come in, and um, figured out where I wanted to place them. The same thing for the input, and uh, then it was a matter of just drilling those holes, and uh, making the cuts fastening everything on onto the plate and wiring it up uh, results quite good cost yeah probably for the box and the unit it cost me with the switches i suppose and the hardware let's say under 60 bucks uh, probably did a little better than that because i tend to buy in in bulk and on special buys but there you have it and we'll take a look at some of the others in a minute here